The following program may contain coarse language, violence, nudity, mature subject matter, or scenes which may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. All Hit Radio! To the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the X Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and we're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll-free, 800-610-7035. My email address is xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On all social media sites, TV, And our main website, www.xzoneradiotv.com. My guest this hour is Robert Salas. We're going to be talking to Robert about his new book, Unidentified, the UFO Phenomenon, How World Gover- Governments Have Conspired to Conceal humanity's biggest secret. In 1969, the United States Air Force issued a statement that read, no UFO reported, investigated, and evaluated by the, U- by the Air Force was ever an indication of threat to our national security. Now, this statement is patently false. It has been proven untrue by the testimony of many military officers and airmen and documentation of incidents involving UFOs and nuclear weapons, testimonies of which the U.S. Air Force are fully aware. Unidentified details, uh, many of these testimonies, some for the very first time. As partial justification for its position, the Air Force cites a University of Colorado study that was contracted and paid for by federal funds. Unidentified reveals how this study was actually just another part of the plan to cover up the reality of the UFO phenomenon. For the very first time, Unidentified publishes evidence that the investigators for the Colorado study knew about the UFO-related missile shutdown incidents, but did not investigate them or include them in their final report. This is where my guest this hour comes in, Robert Salas. Robert Salas is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy, class of 1964. He served seven years on active duty before separating from the Air Force in 1971. While on active duty, he worked as a weapons controller, flew target drones, commanded intercontinental ballistic missiles as launch officer, and worked as an Air Force missile propulsion engineer on the Titan III program. From 1971 to 1973, He worked as a safety and reliability engineer for Martin Marietta Aerospace and Rockwell International on the shuttle program design proposals. In 1974, until his retirement in 1995, he worked for the Federal Aviation Administration as an aircraft structure certification industry. Now, since 1998, he has worked as a mathematics teacher. He currently teaches and tutors mathematics. In 2005, he published the book, Faded Giant with co-author James Klotz, uh, which is which details his UFO incident while stationed at Maelstrom Air Force Base, Montana, in 1967. On September 27, 2010, he co-sponsored a press conference at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., where he and six other ex-military witnesses testified to the reality of the UFO incidents at nuclear weapon bases. Now, in 19, uh, let me see, in May 2013, he participated in the Citizens Hearing on Disclosure, once again at the National Press Club in Washington. Mr. Salas has been publicly speaking about his incident at UFO conferences, radio, and television shows since 1996. The website, www.spiralgalaxy.org. And now joining me 
is Robert L. Salas. And Robert, welcome to the Exxon. Great to be with you, Rob. Robert, Thanks for that comprehensive introduction. Well, I just wanted to know the people. I, I just want to let the listeners know that you are a man who is well qualified, well certified. You are a witness above and beyond reproach. And you, to this very day, are saying, hey, the governments of the world have conspired to conceal the UFO phenomenon. Why? Oh, good question. Why? I, you know, I, uh, based on my experience uh, mm-hmm. with uh, witnesses and uh, and uh, all, all all the experiences I've had in, in in testifying and talking to people, I really think this is now about. Uh, uh, culture of, of greed and power. Um, there, there is a, I'm, I'm convinced, a secret group uh, worldwide, mm-hmm. uh, probably staffed by people that have worked in intelligence agencies, uh, well versed in how to hide secrets, and in uh, such an organization. And it, I think it's to the point now where that they have worked with uh, recovered craft and probably uh, mm-hmm. uh, actual entities and, uh, and, and, and know a lot. <laughs> they know a lot about this phenomenon, which they're not sharing with the public. And uh, probably some of this stuff is very valuable, uh, both commercially and, uh, and as, let's say, uh, uh, bargaining chips mm-hmm. uh, in uh, international politics. Gotcha. Robert, stand by. We've got to take a commercial break. We'll be right back. Exxon Nation, my very special guest this hour is Robert Salas. He is the author of Unidentified, the UFO Phenomenon, How World Governments Have Conspired to Conceal Humanity's Biggest Secret. His website is www.spiralgalaxy.org. The Exxon, a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard, continues on the other side of this two-minute commercial break with yours truly, Rob McConnell. Don't go away. The following program may contain coarse language, violence, nudity, mature subject matter, or scenes which may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Welcome back, Exxon Nation. My guest this hour is Robert Salas. He's the author of Unidentified, the UFO Phenomena. It's published by New Page Press. And Robert's website is www.spiralgalaxy.org. Robert, can you tell us about your March 24th, 1967 UFO encounter while you were in the Air Force? Uh, Sure. Very briefly, I was on duty at uh, what we call Oscar Flight. It's a uh, hardened sight uh, and control of 10 nuclear missiles. These were Minuteman 1 missiles at the time uh, on March 24, 1967. I was down in the capsule, which is 60 feet underground. Uh, we had uh, six guards or so upstairs uh, and uh, a secure facility. Uh, on on this night or early morning, I don't remember which, uh, uh, we got a, two calls. First call from the topside guard said they'd seen strange lights in the sky and uh, uh, making strange maneuvers. Uh, they weren't aircraft, according to them. They were silent, uh, lighted objects, uh, making 90-degree uh, turns, etc., uh, high speeds. I had kind of dismissed this, and then... Um, uh, about five minutes later, he called back, and this time he was screaming into the phone, very frightened, and saying they were looking out at a glowing red object hovering above the front gate. It was just a 
uh, red pulsating light, um, some 40 or 50 feet in diameter, uh, oval shaped, uh, just sitting there above the front gate. They had all the, the weapons drawn, uh, scared to death, uh, and wanted me to tell them what to do next. Uh, I was pretty shocked, uh, thought we could have been under some sort of an attack. Uh, I didn't know what to think, really, but I just told them not to let anything inside the front gate use whatever force necessary. Um, they hung up the phone. I went to tell my commander about the phone calls, and as I was starting to tell him, uh, our missiles started going into what's called a no-go condition. They were disabled. Uh, we got red lights on the board. We got klaxons and horns going off, and uh, all 10 of those missiles uh, became disabled while this object was still up there. Uh, of course, we were locked in. I couldn't go up there and look at the object. Um, uh, and uh, we went through our procedures, uh, checked. Uh, we had a way of checking um, the fault, and it was guidance and control system failure for each of the 10 missiles. Wow. Uh, we had inertial guidance system, meaning we had a, a system uh, – uh, where uh, the guidance package had to be carefully oriented um, and targeted. Uh, and it it was more of a mechanical, initial mechanical system uh, until it got airborne. And then, of course, the computers took over uh, to calculate its uh, trajectory on target. Um, but at any rate, this was just a failure of the guidance system. We, we had the same... Uh, announcement on each of the missiles. Uh, there was no power loss, it, it, but what what this object would have had to do is send a, uh, a specific signal through uh, 60 feet of earth and concrete and uh, wow. penetrate the um, cabling system, which was triply shielded from EMI, electromagnetic interference, mm -hmm. and, uh, and send a signal to each of the missiles separately, which were Located about a mile or two uh, from my facility and then uh, another mile from each other. So um, yeah, this was quite a thing. Uh, we've never, I had never uh, experienced anything like this. Um, there was no real explanation that the Air Force could come up with. But um, And we were notified, after we notified the command post, they, they told us that the same thing had happened uh, at another site. And that turned out to be the Echo Flight incident, which happened about a week earlier. Uh, similar incident, UFOs overhead, and uh, all 10 missiles shut down while the UFOs were overhead. So uh, within the span of eight days, we lost 20 missiles to UFOs. Could those missiles have been reprogrammed to go back into active duty, sir? Oh, absolutely. We, you know, the, the mm -hmm. missiles were not damaged. The systems were not damaged. Uh, we we had maintenance screws get out there right away, and most of these missiles were brought back up online within 24 hours. Wow. So um, it was just a matter of uh, uh, recalibrating uh, the guidance system. Was there any? Was there any? Any notification from NORAD or any other any other radar facility that actually could collaborate the the sightings that your your people on the surface were were, <clears throat> were having? Well, if, if NORAD had any uh, radar data, I didn't hear about it. But what we did find out from our investigation was mm -hmm. that on the same day, March twenty fourth, uh, same evening, actually. Uh, this was a, um, called the belt sighting, and this this is documented, well documented in Blue Book, and of course I've got these documents on my in my books. Right. Um, uh, a UFO was sighted by a truck driver. It was confirmed by uh, Montana Highway Patrol. The UFO landed, and this UFO or other UFOs like it uh, were also seen on the base on Malmstrom Air Force Base flying. Uh, over the base flight line and also tracked on radar. So there, there is a, at least a, a record of that, at least from uh, public reporting. Uh, mm -hmm. This comes from public reports from the newspaper. Uh, we didn't get any documents uh, 
about that particularly, but uh, there were airmen that saw the UFO.